So hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about uh, retrieval augmented generation that is famously known as RAG architecture. And uh, today, I mean, this is uh, very famous in uh, generative AI world. Okay, so in this video, uh, what I'm going to do basically, uh, I'll be so whatever you see in your screen. So this is the whole architecture. So I'll be talking about each and individual component basically, and then explain like what is the role of each and every component. Okay, so I have divided this whole thing in two parts basically, uh, because RAG uh, comprises of retrieval methods and generative approaches both. So first we'll discuss generative approach, and then we'll jump to retrieval method, and then we'll combine. Okay, and then we'll understand step by step like what limitations. Uh, generative approach have and uh, then what uh, rag solves basically okay so let me start with that so uh, what is rag okay so uh, rag uh, model is designed to enhance the capabilities of natural language processing models by combining elements of retrieval based methods with generative approach as i explained in the, i mean uh, not explained yet but as i shown in the uh, diagram okay so that's what i'm going to discuss basically so now uh, what i'm assuming like uh, you might know that rag uh, method uh, came after large language model based generative approaches when they started gaining much momentum so the question is like why we need one more method and what a specific problem it solves right when uh, we already have large language model based generative approaches already existing okay so let's understand the limitations in generative approaches what new rag uh, brings and ultimately the methodology behind this new architecture named as rag okay so what i am going to do basically i am going to start with generative approaches and so slowly move towards rag architecture okay so what is generative approach so generative uh, method involve generating responses or content based on learned patterns and training data. So this line is very important. Okay. How generative method works. They involve generating responses or content based on learned pattern. When we say learned patterns and training data, it means there is a trained model behind. Okay. So that's where uh, these uh, uh, generative approaches work. Okay, so let's understand these generative approaches with the help of diagram as well. So what happens basically, uh, there is a user uh, which has certain uh, questions. So he will come up with query and then it will add certain prompt basically. Okay, so that uh, whatever response he is getting that is formatted. Hmm? And then uh, what will happen next, like he will interact with some user interface uh, where the backend engine is like LLM, large language models. Okay, so what happens behind the scene basically, how large language model in a nutshell works basically. Okay, so um, that's where like uh, these are called a generative approach because they are kindly kind of generating the text. Okay, and right now I'm not talking about multi-model approaches. I am uh, focusing on uh, text-based. Okay, so we have external data source and that will be converted to embedding. I mean, that will pass through embedding models. So then we'll have embeddings and these embeddings could be different types, vector-based or other different types based on I mean, need or whatever kind of model we are going to train. Okay, and then uh, we have a uh, certain uh, training approaches. So again, here, because I'm going to focus on RAG basically. So here I'm not going to explain the LLM architecture in detail. Okay, that you can refer in different video. Okay, so but uh, let me tell you one important thing. So, I mean, most of the uh, LLMs, uh, either it is coming from Meta organization or Google or some other uh, organization or maybe OpenAI, the very famous one. Okay, so mostly they follow transformer based architecture. Okay, so that is the uh, engine behind those LLMs. Okay, so now your model is trained and then you got one of the LLM. Okay, that is large language model. And then uh, that query or uh, including prompt will interact with that LLM engine behind the scene and then it will get the response. Okay, so this is in a nutshell the generative approach, but there are many limitations of this generative approach. So what are those limitations? Let me explain uh, the important ones in uh, more detail. Okay, then you will understand, okay, why we need a RAG architecture or RAG methodology. Okay, then the concept will be more clear to you. So the, uh, I mean, there is no uh, any order of the limitations. I'm just explaining one by one, okay? So the very first one is like not updated to the latest information. So when um, your um, query is interacting with LLM, so LLM is of course uh, trained uh, uh, up to a particular date, 
okay so whatever llm model you are referring behind the scene that will be trained up to, uh, for a particular date okay and now if you are um, kind of interested in any information which is beyond that date okay or a very recent one or if you are uh, i mean uh, focused on a very uh, specific um, area a specific domain a specific field okay that time what happens like llm fails i mean these generative approaches fail because they don't have knowledge about that one right of course i mean uh, that's where like um, these um, developer have trained that llm model in such a way like you will still get a response like telling okay he uh, that model doesn't have that uh, information or sometime some weird uh, response you will get okay so that's the one major limitation of this okay and then uh, what is the second one like uh, suppose the, uh, that information is lacking the what next you will do you will try to retrain that model right and you know that llms are trained in billion, billions of parameters right so that training takes a lot of time and again uh, it will consume a lot of resources right so that everybody cannot do that one right we don't we all don't have the, those but that much resources right so that's where this is again a very important i mean uh, important point in terms of limitations right it takes a lot of time then third, like, uh, this is also, again, the important one, hallucination. What is hallucination, basically? Right? So hallucination refers to the output, which is factually incorrect. Okay? So if you are getting certain output, which is factually incorrect. Okay? So that is name, I mean, called as in this word hallucination. Or it is nonsensical. I mean, this does not make much sense, whatever response you are getting, right? So that is called a hallucination. How the output looks coherent and grammatically correct. Right. So ultimately, the, because LLM is trained on very uh, huge set of billions of parameters, so that output will still be coherent and grammatically correct, but factually it will be incorrect. So that's where this information could be, could be misleading and could have major impact on business decision making. Okay, because when uh, big big businesses take certain decisions, right? So ultimately, some uh, profit and loss is involved, right? So uh, nobody want to go in loss because of these outputs, right? So that is this is very very important factor. Right? So this is one of the major limitations of generative approaches. Right? Then what is the next one? Lack in domain specific most accurate information. Suppose it's a, because I mean these LLMs are trained on publicly available external data set. Right? Though it includes most of the information, but in a very generic way. For example, uh, it has uh, information about how HR human resource policies work. Okay, but there could be certain policies which are very very uh, company specific. Isn't it right? So that's where like uh, those very specific policy information, that knowledge base, it does, it might not have. So that's where there will be the need to retrain those uh, model on that uh, specific or private or custom data set, right? And retraining again will take a lot of time. Then again, this is not uh, the feasible option, right? So that's where like these are the important limitations. Then again, uh, last but not least, whatever I have listed basically, uh, another like source citations, citations, right? So uh, here, like whatever responses you are getting, so they don't give the source, like what is the source of information from where this information is being extracted? Because behind the scene, everything is stored in embedding and we have lost the source, right? In future, maybe they start giving the source, but right now when I'm creating the video, okay, the source citations is not available. And that's where, like, it's not ethically correct. Like, you use the information, but you don't know, don't give the credit, right? Who Who is the source of that information? It's not good practices, right? Though it is happening, but it's not good practices, right? So this is also, I would say, like, I mean, important, uh, I mean, uh, point in under the limitation category of generative approaches, right? So these are the main uh, limitations I have uh, talked about here. But now let's discuss the another important thing is like what, why we are here in this video like rag okay so how these limitations would be reduced up to a certain extent using rag methodology i'm not saying here rag will reduce completely but yeah it will reduce up to a very huge extent these limitations okay and now let's understand like, what is the methodology behind rag and how it solves these limitations these problems basically okay so the next part we'll discuss, uh, as I said in the starting, like RAG, RAG is nothing but it combines two approaches, retrieval-based and generative approach. And that's where it solves these problems. Okay, so now let's understand what is retrieval-based approach. What is what are retrieval methods basically, okay? So for that, as I said, there is a one limitation on like uh, domain space, pick most accurate information, right? So what we will do basically, we have private or custom data, right? So you will immediately say like, why don't you retrain the LLM? Again, I have explained, retraining will take a lot of resources and a lot of time, and that time you don't have. 
So what are the alternative? Alternatives are retrieval methods. So here you have a private or custom data sets. So what you will do? You will pass through the embedding models, which will generate vector embeddings. And now vector embeddings, you will store in vector DB. So in retrieval me methods, the very famous uh, DB, like a storage system is vector DB. Why? The reason is like uh, the search will be very faster and similarity matching and all those context similarity matching will be very fast so that's where we will are referring vector db right? okay so here uh, we'll be generating vector embeddings and those embeddings will be stored in vector db okay and now um, we got the vector db uh, data set for our private or custom data set for example you are training the bot on your hr policies okay so here all the documents every information related to your company specific hr policies okay and then that you have stored in vector db next what will happen here um, you have, so in this user inter because ultimately this is the user interface where uh, user will interact everything is the back end engine right so now here query and prompt you have that's what a user is entering typing in the user interface so what will happen from here query will traverse through the embedding models and then for that it will be converted to vector embeddings and then it will search for the similar or context sim uh, based similarity matching on the vector db okay so it will get some similar uh, document it will retrieve the similar documents from vector db and that's where uh, we see okay this retrieval based methods have uh, some important components so the first one is like retriever the second one is uh, like ranker and the last one is like generator okay so generator i will explain later so first one is like retrievers so what retriever will do basically it will retrieve the uh, context based similar documents from this vector db based on this query okay and then it will uh, retrieve a lot of documents okay if there is a huge information then what ranker will do ranker will uh, rank those uh, documents okay based on the similarity so in this way we'll get top end documents okay and that and we can define okay so we will get top end documents it could be top five or top ten or whatever okay then uh, these are uh, this is the ultimate uh, similar documents based on this query okay and now here this will be pa passed through llm along with this prompt so here we have retrieved context that is very similar uh, i mean the response very similar to the query what we were expecting and then prompt what prompt will do so now with with the help of prompt llm with redesign i mean rephrase this uh, answer to the uh, the way we want to see it okay i mean very formatted way okay because you see in the response i mean everyone uh, till now would have interacted with chat gpt right how it responds like a bullet it has bullet it has listing it has heading and everything right it can, if, even if you just uh, talk about the coding like you uh, talk about co-pilots right so i mean it, it solved the coding problem also how it format basically using the prompts okay so that's a prompt and retrieved context will now pass with llm and now llm has trained knowledge to uh, format this uh, response based on the prompt okay and now it will regenerate the response based on your query so now you see here we have a very uh, specific or custom data that is our private data and that we have not retrained the model because this job can be done very uh, quickly right and it is very uh, resource optimized thing right so that's where uh, retriever method use retriever component that is the first component then ranker component and then ultimately the last one that is generator which is anyway the part of generative approach okay and that's how you get the response in a uh, much accurate uh, factually correct way and here also you know what is the source right source is like nothing but your private data you are the owner of, of that one right or whoever has provided this data right so you can easily cite that so at in this way we can uh, reduce all those limitations okay and nowadays that's where like people are even uh, like moving back and uh, they are i mean they are at least trying not to use the huge llm model like which has been trained on billions of parameters rather uh, they are going a step back and they are using a um, reduced uh, uh, kind of llm like which is trained on less parameters because anyway the, they will be using the rag based architecture the, that involves retrieval methods and that's where this uh, context specific information they are getting from this vector db and then this they will be using for uh, like uh, formatting knowledge okay so by combining both of these knowledge uh, these responses will be factually correct and these limitations will be overcome okay and this whole uh, by 
combine if we combine retrieval methods with generative approach so this whole uh, methodology is known as retrieval augmented generation and very famously known as rag methodology in uh, this generative ai word okay and if you want to read more about this so there is a paper uh, i will give in the link uh, link in the description you can refer so there is a paper in 2020 uh, released by meta okay so they have released this first time and they have beautifully explained everything in that paper okay so here i have explained the high level architecture hopefully you have enjoyed this and you and now you have some fair understanding about this right so what are the components of rag retriever ranker and generator okay and uh, how it uh, works, it uh, uses retrieval methods uh, with generative approaches, and then uh, it generates the response finally, right? So uh, this was all about uh, retrieval augmented generation for now. In upcoming videos, I'll be also talking about what is the difference between RAG and fine tuning of LLMs and many things around that one, okay? So stay tuned and uh, uh, I would request if you, you are enjoying my videos and if they are helpful, then please subscribe to my channel and then also please share with the AIML community. So that's how um, you can um, motivate me in uh, creating those uh, videos, I mean continuing creating those videos. So thank you very much.